<laughs> well, hi guys, welcome back. This is part two in the Black Mac series. In this episode, what I'm going to be doing is checking out the power board because that is where the fault starts. It was not powering on at all when I first got it and I plugged it in. It was dead as a dodo. After doing the first part where I've replaced the IC on the main board, the SCSI IC, and put a socket in so I can run it off the daughter board, I am going to look at getting the power supply side of things fixed and working if possible hopefully it's not too hard from what I've learnt from Adrian's website that's Adrian's Digital Basement there's not a lot on the boards that can go wrong it's generally uh, in the power circuit side so hoping it's not going to be the tube or one of the guns in the tube or something to do with that I'm hoping not or the EHT the high voltage transformer on the board I'm hoping it's none of those and it's something simple but we will find out so here we go grab yourself a drink something to snack on if you want to and a nice comfy seat and sit back and let's get on with it okay guys so I've pulled the power board out first um, when I tried it as you'd seen there's no power being drawn into this at all so what I decided to do is I will pull out the power board and the logic board so I pulled the power board out first it wasn't too bad it was a couple of screws three I think at most after taking the back of the case off and this is the board I got out now you can't see it quite just yet but I will zoom in and what we have is around here the back of this and around in here and on these two variable resistors there's a lot of oxidization like battery oxidization of the copper it's got that bluey crystalline on it um, so I will zoom in and hopefully you guys can see this just give us a sec Okay, so as you might have seen there, you can see that the oxidization I was talking about. I don't know a lot about Max. Um, this is the first one in the older series I've opened up. I've done a couple of uh, Mac books. Um, when, when I had my shop, I did. But this is the first of the Mac classics. And I've read a little bit about them, um, just because I got this specific machine. So I'm going to look at giving these a clean and then... I think I might just check the components and make sure they read what specs are on them to see if they're okay and that this is just some oxidization that's on the board that we can clean off and they will still be okay. I'm a bit worried about the variable resistors, um, these two pots up here, and that it's gone underneath them onto the tracks. If it has, then it's a matter of finding out what these exactly are and getting a couple of replacements for them. Um, hopefully they're not. But yeah, so we'll go through and clean this up and try and get as much of this off as possible. So um, I will go through and do that. But I must say they love their hot melt glue. Because there's hot melt glue all over this thing. So um, I'll have a look. But other than that, the capacitors look okay. None of them are bulging. None of them are oxidized on the lids. 
Um, everything else looks alright. The um, filter, the RF cap looks alright. The fuses are okay. I mean, yeah, other than that, this pretty much looks alright. Um, that they're not bad. I don't think it's worthwhile replacing the caps. Um, unless I get some sort of a unreliable... No, oh, maybe. Maybe we will do the caps. Uh, just a couple of them sitting here. Uh, the way the cuts are actually on, on the lids, when I'm rubbing over them, they, I'm getting a sort of a domed feel on the on the segments, on the three different segments. I've got like a bit of a dome. Some of them are fine. Some of them are nice and flat, like that one and that one. So those three there, that one's all right. That's, those ones are okay. That one and that one are okay. That one. This one. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. They'll have slight doming on them. They, they haven't burst or anything, but that might be sl starting to show the signs of stressing. So maybe those ones. There's two, four, six, seven of them. We might replace those um, and just see how we go from there. The others, I say, look, look pretty much okay. Um, yeah, so the rest of them look pretty much okay. So I think we'll have a look at this and... and um, Try and clean up these connectors around here where this green stuff is first. Alright, so we'll get on with it. Okay, so I've been checking the resistors um, that I've had on here, the ones I had to clean really, really well down the bottom here. All these tend to come up fine, but this one, if I try to pull up a resistance on this one here, I get nothing. Nothing at all. Sometimes if I wiggle it around, I will, so I'm picking that this one is probably faulty. That's the exact same one there. So I mean I'm picking a, a resistance up through there. And these other ones. I'm picking up resistances. But in this end one, I can't get anything no matter what I do. I don't pick up a resistance through that one. So that is one I think I'm going to have to replace. Now I've checked these two pots and they, I'm pretty sure these are the same and they're 2 meg. And this one, the, the resistances are a little bit different if I, if I total them up to this one. But that may be with whatever else is in the circuit as well. Um, the rest of it seems to be fine. These caps, I might leave them for now and 
power it up again and see what happens after I replace this resistor. Um, I will do some more checking on the net uh, to see if there's any information about what could be causing this no power issue. I'll check the switch, which I haven't done yet, uh, to make sure that that's making a contact going in and out. It should be okay because it's an encapsulated unit and there wasn't any corrosion around here. Um, you saw me, I popped the back of these off and just cleaned them out as well. There was a little bit down in there, but over the years you'd expect that. The rest of it looks okay. So what I will do is, as I said, I'll get a replacement resistor for this. We'll replace that and then um, we'll look at trying to power it up and see if we get any uh, luck out of it that way. Alrighty, so I will sort out a resistor for this and then we'll be back to it. Hi guys, so what I'm going to do is check out this power board of the um, Mac Classic, which is the third version of the Classics that came out. And uh, watching uh, stuff on the internet and reading a few things, and thanks to Adrian from Adrian's Digital Basement, he did a, a lot on the Mac Classics, so that really helped me out. Because there's a lot we're going to have to do with this, and he's got a really good video tutorial on doing the drives, the, the floppy disk drives and that sort of thing. So I want to give a really good um, thanks to him for the videos he did on that. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is a few things he's he, he said to me to on the video to check is the brightness variable resistor. Sometimes if they get broken and that, you won't get any variable resistance on here and you'll have a black screen no matter what. So I'm going to check that. The other thing he said is a big problem with a lot of these are the header connectors that go from the power board to the main board and of course then there's signals that come from the main motherboard back to the power board that then go to the tube. So I'm going to go through and, and resolder all those and check the connections. If the connections look a bit grubby I'm going to give them a bit of a clean. Uh, he uses deoxit. I used to have some. I don't have any at this stage. I do need to get some more. Uh, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to check this. I will go through and then resolder all these header pins that are on here that need to be done then once we've done all that I will power this up and see if we get the 5 volt rail that goes to the motherboard because if we have that it should be okay because from the 5 volt there is also a 12 volt rail coming from there as well but we can check the 12 volt rail as well if we don't have a 12 volt rail there is no way we're going to get anything on the screen with this and it won't fully power up because it takes the 12 volts and turns it into the high voltage to run the screen. And that's where it gets up to 10 to 12,000 volts to, to run the screen. So, And that's what it uses the EHT coil for on the board. So if we don't have a 12 volt and we don't have a 5 volt, this thing ain't going to run. I will do those first. Check this. I will check those. And then if those will work okay, I'll come back to you and we'll turn it over and we will try checking out the voltages on it. Alright, so let's get on with it. Okay, so I've got all those done. What I am going to do is check the voltages on the board before I plug anything else in. So I don't want to get any any high voltages or that running in the board until I know there is 5 or 12 volts running in here. Now I found the repair manual which gives me all, all the information I need and it tells me what voltages are running on what pin on this header. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that somewhere, clip that somewhere safe out of the way. And then what I will do is I will go through and check the battery voltage, the 12 volts, the minus 12 volts, and the plus 5 volts. I'll check all those. Now, if all those voltages are there, this board should be pretty much okay. Um, the sync ones for the uh, vertical sync, horizontal sync, and that, the other ones that come back from the motherboard. So I can't really do anything with that. So, And this one goes to the yoke. This goes to the deflectors on the yoke. And that other one is another controller that goes to the motherboard. Uh, no, sorry. No, that one goes to the back of the tube. That's the one I'm pretty sure that one is. So, but it also carries a couple other signals on those three pins. But we'll get around to that. So I'm, what I want to check first is the voltages on here. So I'll just make this safe and then we'll get on to that. So now I'm just going to put the power in. Now I do have my limiter, which I'll just show you. So I have my power limiter, I have the light turned on. And if there is a dead short on the board, this will light up. So what I'll do is I'll just turn it on and we'll see. try to get you a picture of that okay so that's we are there and so what I'm going to do is just turn this on and we will see if nothing okay I'm not sure if that's turned on so I'll turn the right way on and the light bulb flashed which means it powered on and powered off which is good okay so that's doing its job, and it's telling us that there was power in there, but the light bulb is limiting the amount of current that can be drawn. And the other thing is this may not be running because it hasn't got any draw on the on the power at all. So what I will do now is we'll see if we got any low voltages on this. So remember guys when you're working on this sort of gear, um, you are dealing with high voltage and it's potentially lethal um, so just be very 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 careful dealing with this sort of stuff if you're not comfortable in doing it find somebody who is now what I want is pin 9 is orange which is ground I want that on ground and the first green one in the line should be four and a half volts so what I'll do is we will turn this on, take the light bulb out, turn this on. Okay, so what I got there was a very low tick, 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 tick through the speaker. And as you saw, the voltage wasn't going up. Now that was for the battery. I will check to see if we get the 5 volt rail this time. Now that's just going round and round. That should be minus. It's not quite doing what it should do that I'll put that on orange here and that should be blue should be plus five as well no it's not so it, we're not getting the voltages we should so that is telling me that the, the circuit is not firing up properly you know that could be something in around here um, that could be a resistor it could be a capacitor it could be one of these diodes um, what we should do is disconnect this and discharge the voltages out of these capacitors because these can hold some nasty voltages I mean on this side of the circuit you're talking around 400 odd volts could be sitting in here and that's an, that's enough to give you a bit of a crispy so what we need to do is to 
check the bulges across this SCR. Now, this is where you got to be careful. Some of this stuff is actually hot. So, this stuff would be live. And find ourselves in Earth. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll. Yeah, it's 17, 16. It's not too bad in voltage, it's dropping away. 11, so the voltages are dropping down, so it's discharging. So, seeing that, the circuit is sort of working, but it's not it's not firing up and working properly. So I'm picking it's probably over here somewhere. I would say the voltages into here are probably okay. Now this one you saw me take out over here, this, this is what they call a reefer cap. Now what these are are an RF capacitor. They take the noise out of the power. The problem with these is I don't know if this one has been replaced or not. And the problem with them is they go. And when they go, they stink to high heaven. Now, reapers, you don't need to put them in. You don't need them. They're only there for noise. You can get brand new ones. So that would be your other option. And what you've got to look for is on the top, they'll have the microfarad size of them. And then they'll either be an X or a Y, so you have to replace with the same type. So make sure if it's an X, get an X. If it's a Y, get a Y. Okay. So this one is a 0.47 UF X. I'm not sure if I've got any of these. It won't hurt it running it without it. As I said, this just takes noise out of it. If you find there's a bit of noise in the machine, replace it. Um, but yeah, get get another one and replace it. And see how you can go. So what I think we need to do is to probably have a look and find out where the issue is on this board. So I'll unplug this. Now, so we isolated it away from the mains. I'll flip it over and we'll just check these caps and just see if they're discharged. Now if they're discharged, what we'll do is, is we'll try and track through, I'm, as I'm saying, I'm pretty sure it's on this side of the circuit. We'll just probably try and track to where there could be the sh a short, potentially, that's causing this to not fire up and run. So what we will do is we will then check, we will check those out first, okay? So we'll go through and do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've given the board a bit of a clean up, um, and I'm going to check the voltage in on the board. Now I'm pretty sure the high voltage side of it's working. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the voltage across here from the plus to the minus, and to actually see what the voltage will read, and then. If that comes up okay, we'll discharge it, and then we'll check the voltage up here on this SCR up the top here. So what we'll do is we'll power this on. We're on. And be careful, because there is a lot of voltage kicking around here. And I've got this set to 600 volts AC. So if we go across those two, and we have nothing. Nothing at all. Okay, so that tells me there is something else going on with this then. Okay, and so this is telling me that we have, oh, it would help if we turn this on. So now if we check across here, yeah, 335 volts. And you can actually hear the power supply going tick, 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 tick. So it is trying to start up. Now we, as I said, now this is now turned off. You can see the voltage in that. Now you've got to be careful. You touch anything, you're going to get a decent belt, and it might even be lethal. But as you see, with it turned off, the high side is obviously working because the voltage is draining away. Now this will take a little while to drain away. So we will let you do that and just keep an eye on it. So we're down to about 70 volts. DC. So we'll let that drain right away. So if we check here, it's about 24 volt, 20 volts per capacitor. And these are two of the capacitors across here. The one on the positive side and one on the negative side. So checking those, that should that seems to be okay. So we do have something that's causing a fault. And it's not on the high voltage side. And as you can see, I took this reefer cap out 
and it works without the reefer cap. As I was saying, this is only to filter out noise on the power line for the mains coming in. So you can run them without it. If it's a necessity, get a new one, put a new one in. It wouldn't hurt doing it anyway. The newer ones are a lot more reliable than the old ones, and they're made out of a different type of material. So they don't swell up and explode like these, and you don't want one to explode. They stink, and they stink the house out. We'll keep checking this until the voltage is down to that's down to about 6 volts now. So what I think we will do is then, we know that the voltage is alright there, so we'll check what else we've got to check going to that switcher chopper over the back here and see how we go from there. So when I was checking this board earlier, I was checking some of the transistors out. They seem to be okay, but there was one that was give me a bit of a dodgy reading every now and then that's this one here and that was the um, 2N6394 now I have a replacement I have, I have a 2N6395 which is a higher spec or higher current version of the same transistor so I'm wondering if that could be a bit dodgy so what I've decided to do is I'll pull that out and replace it and then um, we can carry on checking uh, to see if there's anything else wrong with it so that's what I'll do now, so I'll go through this and I will pull this transistor out. So as you can see there, got that out, a um, bit of a pain to get out because there were quite a few heavy planes on here and they were going back to this, um, to these uh, resistors and that here. So that's why I used the soldering iron to give me a little bit more heat. So um, I put that in, I actually put it in so it was proud because I don't want to cut the leads off in case this is not the fault of it, I can put this back into stock. So I've done that. I had an issue. These are really close here, These the connectors where these go through. And those two kept wanting to bridge. I've cleaned them out. They're not bridging at the moment. That's all good. And so I'll just make sure there's no crap around here as well. Right. So that looks all good. And what we can do is we could try this to see if it's going to work now. I'm just checking checking around any of the heavy components because sometimes you can also get a crack through the heat and when it expands and contracts expands and contracts they form a crystallization they actually form a crystallization around the, the leg and you get a bad connection and that can cause a lot of your problems as well I'm just checking for that it doesn't look like there's anything else it doesn't look like there's anything that's touching anything it shouldn't touch everything else looks okay right so we'll clean this up and what we'll do is we might just try that out and see if that has fixed our problem Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll power it on, and I'll, we'll just see what happens this time. Okay, the voltage looks a little bit better. It is switching up and down, up and down, as if it's not wanting to start. That could be because there is no load on the circuit either. So what I'm thinking is we'll put this back in the case with the motherboard, because the motherboard will pull enough power to start this, and we'll check the 5 volts again just to see if we're getting a stable 5 volt supply. Uh, it's a bit of mucking around, but it's only a few screws, so it's not too bad. Alright, so I think we will do that. I will pause this here, and I will let this discharge. And then while this discharges, then I will put it back in the case. And we'll see if we get a 5 volt power supply out of it. Okay, so I've got the chassis up here, the board's up there discharging. Now this had a weird scuzzy setup inside it, whereas as I was telling you earlier, it had the soldered two pins on either end soldered across the SCSI controller on the motherboard. So what I'm going to do is 
the floppy drive I don't know whether it's ever been serviced or anything so I'm going to take the hard drive and the floppy drive out because they need to be out of here to get this running standard to start with then we also need to service the floppy drive and um, if the hard drive's not working it's not worth being in there and as I said I do have a blue SCSI and um, that could be another option if this hard drive is faulty so what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll pull that out and we'll get this all ready once this is all out the board should be fine so I can put the board and the motherboard back in and we can see what happens from there okay so I just went through and I was checking off what's what so I've drawn a picture of the SCSI board or the SCSI daughter board for this and it has four connectors at the back and then it has a small IDC the large SCSI IDC and it has the 40 pin header that goes down to the chip on the motherboard now these back ones here are slightly different colors now one I think was powering from the motherboard which is on the board itself the that would be quite easy to trace and it has a diode over the back of that socket so what I'm going to do is, is I've written down the orientation of the color of the plugs so there was two two pin ones one was black and red and the other one was black and yellow so I've written those down on here and the other one was the hard drive connector which is a standard hard drive power connector so it's keyed to go one way so I don't need to worry about what way the colors went on that so um, what I will do is it looks like it's had it's got a couple of resistors and capacitors it will run 12 and 5 volts so I'm picking that the power in would have been 12 volts and it's filtering and dividing it down to a 5 volt rail because the 5 volt will be just for the logics on the board the 12 volt will be for the motor and that to spin up and for the head seeking and it so that'll be the main one for the power but we could always uh, make it a small or get a small 5 and 12 volt internal power supply if this is a bit dodgy because these used to draw a little bit of power the the old three and a half inch uh, half heights we need to and that's an issue with running this we can look at putting one in and pulling off a 240 volt line put a plug on somewhere and add it in around this so that it pulls its own power off to, to actually run it so we're not pulling it out of the, the main power supply um, that is what I've done I also had to on the front of the hard drive it had the hard drive LED now these extra wires I pulled off those were for the hard drive LED and then there were these two here now what these are for I'm not 100% sure but um, they go to the, the front panel and I'm uh, to the front panel on the screen so until I get it going or unless I pull the metal case out to see where they're going to behind there I'm not 100% sure so I mean one's hard drive light what would the other one maybe power um, the other one I don't know but anyway this is out now which I needed to get this out because we have to strip this off of here well we can take the floppy drive out of here and um, we need to do that we, we need to service that floppy drive a big problem with a lot of these classics was in the floppy drive they ran a Sony floppy disk drive 800 some of them ran the 1.44s it was in the eject mechanism there was a gear they made for them and it tended to be a different color to all the other gears that used to go brittle over time and would strip out and the gears are stripped so I mean the drive you'd put it in but it wouldn't eject and you could not eject the disc um, sometimes they would partially eject and then strip and if that happens the whole timing goes out and you'll never get another disc in it is relatively easy to fix if that is the problem but we'll go through that when we have a look at this later on so this is out so I'll move this out of the way and then what we'll do is we'll get the main board and the motherboard the motherboard that's over the side there put back in connect it up we'll just see if she'll boot up and give us some sort of a screen if not it's pointing to there's another power issue on the board hopefully it's not the motherboard but I'm picking it's probably the power it'll be a capacitor or something on the main power board that could be giving us an issue but anyway I'll put this all aside I'll put these screws in a safe place and um, we will carry on with this okay guys I confess it got the better of me so I've gone through and I've taken the screws out that hold this metal frame in and as I said these tools are indispensable because with the Mac you do need long long 
Torx drivers. Now rather than buying a, a specific one for it, as I've shown you in the past, I have my kit that I got from AliExpress, and this has all the sorts of con connectors and Torx heads and three-sided heads, all that sort of stuff that you need, Allen keys, and they have the extenders on them, and this gives you something long enough to get into the places you need to, and it will get it long enough down through here to in here, to, to go down in through the back here, and it also when you go inside the case, in the lid of the case, they're long enough as well. So anyway, so I said, you know, you need these sort of little tools to get on with it. So what I'll do now is we'll pop this off and we'll see what is under here. There we go. And it is actually three sets of LEDs. So one is the hard drive. Then the next one is whatever the yellow one is. And the next one is whatever the red one is. So... Looking at the front of it, the closest to the floppy is your hard drive LED. Then there's whatever the yellow one is, and then there's whatever the next one is. I don't know what the colours are, but this is pretty dusty too when I've taken it out. So I'll go through and give this a bit of a clean in here and, and uh, sanitise and get rid of a lot of this dust and gunk out of here. Just to make it a bit tidier and that. And as I said, I'm not a Mac, big Mac fan. I'm not into Macs and that. But this was more of a curiosity thing for me by the front of the case and, and I'll show you, I'll just slide her over and as you can see on the front there it's got the black Mac. Now I don't know what that is but that looks like it's actually on, it does not look like somebody has put a label on that because that writing on, on the front of that actually goes with the grain of the case, how it has that orange peely effect on the case. That is lo like it's been printed on the case. But I can't find the information out about it. So anyway, whether this was a special for something, I don't know. But anyway, we will go through and see if we can get this working. And whether the SCSI... Now, if we can get this going, what would be on the drive? So that would be really interesting to see what was on it. So black Mac. Now, the only thing I can sort of, being in New Zealand here, I know they used a lot of Apple Macintosh and Apple gear during the America's Cup racing over here quite a few years back. And so I'm just wondering, our boat that we had in the America's Cup is called Black Magic. I'm wondering if this is something tied up with that. I'm not saying it is, and I'm not saying it's not. I don't know. But I'm just saying, it could be. That could be one reason why it is. A lot of people I've actually asked about it don't know about the Black Mac side of it. They have no idea. So, I won't bore you with this. I will pause this here and I'll go through and give this a decent clean. And then we'll come back to it from there. Alright guys? See you shortly. Okay, so I've got it all back together. Um... What I will do is power it on and we'll see what we get in the voltage side of things. 5.9. That's a bit high. So what I'm going to do is turn it around and we will adjust the voltage on that to drop that down. The um, It shouldn't be up that high. It should be 5.1. So what I'm going to do is adjust that voltage on the power board. Just get around to the right place where I can get to that. Oh, that's underneath the screen. Okay. Well, the height and the voltage span oh oh no it can't be for those hmm. okay there usually is something to adjust the voltage on the board and I can't quite see what that should be other than replacing that transistor I haven't really done much more to it so um, if that was the voltage it was set to originally that um, must be okay. So, 
what I will do is I think I might plug the screen and that back in and the connectors on and we'll just give it a go and see if this because it beeped for us which means that it is getting power through and it's starting up which is more than what it was doing originally it was just dead so I'll plug everything back in and we'll give it another go and see how we go from there okay so I've put all the plugs in on the board um, the other thing I did do is I also put the protective piece on the side there looking at the board itself the only two adjusters I can see that are anywhere near the for the voltage tends to be tends to be around where it says it's for these these two on the side here which is one is height and the other one is voltage um, spanning well that's why I have no idea but as I said it fired up we will try it and see it may be within spec I don't know um, but as I said this is all back together now so what we'll do is I will plug this in power it up and we'll see if we get anything on the screen so if I do what I'll do is I'll reposition this so you guys can see the screen and um, see what happens when it powers on okay so we'll give this a go And yes we do because this is a 4 meg um, unit it takes a while to go through and check the RAM so what I will do is I will try and balance this so it's not going to explode and do anything silly so what I'll do is I'll put this here I think you can see that so what we'll do is we'll turn it on screen coming up and it has good brightness on the screen too as you can see there when you up and down it's got really good brightness on the screen it's a really nice screen I'm just waiting for that to finish doing its count and its check and there we go now it's looking for the floppy or something to start up off which I don't have any of that connected to it so what I'm going to do here is then I will now turn this off. The front of this needs a bit of a clean. And um, I will then look at doing the SCSI and the floppy for this, okay? Alright guys, so we'll be back to this shortly. Well there we go guys. So we did get it powering up now there were a few little pieces in there. there there were a couple of cuts that um didn't make it in there because i hadn't realized it hadn't unpaused that's why you might have seen there was a it was a little bit disjointed in some places but i hope you got the overall gist of what was going on the next bit is to check out the floppy drive i think and then get that sorted i have got parts for the floppy drive i'm waiting on um and that is the gear for it i looked at getting some off ebay and it was like you to buy four of them they sold them in like sets of four to buy four of them and plus freight it was going to cost me like 40 odd dollars and i'm thinking eh, it's a bit over the top so i reached out into our local our vintage group on facebook and asked if anybody locally uh, in the country and within my area had a 3d printer now i've got an fdm printer Everything I did, even the slowest and the finest setting I could get it down to, I could not get the inner, smaller gear to print properly. The outer one, which was slightly bigger, smaller teeth, but a bigger gear, printed fine, not a problem. As when I went to do the inner one, and I'm picking it's probably the movement of it was too much for it. Um, they recommend to the guy who made the STLs for this, which are on Thingiverse if you're looking for them, just look up Mac Floppy Drive or Mac Eject Gear on Thingiverse and you'll find them. And um, he recommends that the higher quality 
you need to look at resin printing and a harder type of um, type of resin too and not a softer one I even looked at going to PCBWay to see what their prices would be and you can get them done in a uh, printed metal which would be really good because they'd last forever then but cost wise again was just so expensive by the time you did one or two and then added freight on it and that but I was lucky there was two or three guys to put their hands up and say yes hey look one guy says he's got a couple spare from when he did his floppy drives and um, he had a couple left over he says I could have them he was going to post them to me another guy turned around send me the STLs and let me have a look at them I've got a resin printer and i am got some stuff I'm going to print and his name was Matt, Matt House and I'd just like to say thanks Matt for printing up those gears for me in this next video I'm going to give the gears a go and we'll see if that fixes our eject problem or not and if not I'll get back to Matt and we'll look at doing something in a, a slightly harder type of resin to see if that fixes it that's on the next one I hope you guys are enjoying this one as we go along I'm still waiting on parts for the ColecoVision and I'm still waiting on the SCSI chip for the um, Mac Plus as well so I did get the 74 LVCs to finish off the TNVDP for the Coleco which is good but without the crystal and stuff I can't do a lot so I'll wait until we get that and then we can do the RAM and that sort of thing as well at the same time so anyway guys hopefully you're enjoying this as we're going any suggestions of that get back to me in the comments below as always keep safe out there have a great day or a great week at that and until next time Ciao.